Hey guys, hope you are doing well. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today's video is going to focus in on the connectors that are used for our brushless speed controls to the brushless motor. Now before we dive into the content for today, I do want to talk about the Patreon page that I've created for the channel. The page is going to help support a lot of the experimental type videos that we want to do on this channel. Any of the funding that is generated through this page is going to go towards the supplies, components, and equipment that is needed to produce these educational type videos. Now if you haven't checked out the video that we've done last talking about regenerative braking, I would highly suggest for you to take a look at that. We ended up coming up with a design and 3D printing a transmission box to allow two motors to be assembled and mated together. We ended up spinning up one of the motors and then used the other motor to apply the brakes and slow that motor down. We then checked to see if the brakes actually fed power back to the battery recharging it. If you enjoy these types of experimental videos, check out the Patreon link in the description below. Now let's jump back into the content for today. If you've ever had to purchase a brushless speed control for your specific application, you may have noticed that not all of them come with connectors. And this is a perfect example of a speed control that does not have connectors. What is needed is I'm gonna have to go and select the right connectors for my specific application to solder onto this speed control. What is that process? How do I know exactly what connector to install on these wires? Well, we're gonna take a look at each of the breakdowns of how you select the right connector. Now, the best connector to use that goes from the speed control to our brushless motor is otherwise known as the bullet connector. I have an example here of a bullet connector. It really comes in two components to serve as the full mating connector. One is going to be your female component of the connector and the other is going to be the male component of the connector. The big question that should come from those connectors that you just saw is which one do you use on the speed control or which ones do you use on the motor? Now I'm not going to tell you the direct answer to that question. Instead what I want to do is arm you with the logic behind the decision making process because this will allow you to not only pick the connectors and which side you should solder them onto your radio controlled applications but it'll also allow you to figure it out for any other application. Now when you're talking about putting these connectors on multiple different components, it really comes down to which one is going to be your load component and which one is going to be your power source component. And what you want to make sure is that your power source is going to have the connectors soldered onto it that will resist shorting out. Now it might be very obvious to you that the female connector is going to be the connector that has the least likelihood of shorting out. If I were to show you the male connectors, you'd be able to see that a lot of metal is exposed. And if these were actually powered and ended up touching each other for whatever reason, maybe they get unplugged when you're running your radio control vehicle, they can easily short out and any type of short in electrical applications is never a good thing. This is why we go ahead and we place the female connectors onto our speed control. Our speed control has the power and it's gonna send it to the motor, therefore this is what gets those female connectors. Now this is where we get to the second part of our process. Bullet connectors come in multiple different ranges. Common ones for RC is covered between two millimeters and eight millimeters in diameter. And there are applications that are suited for even connectors outside of that range. In order to help decide what connectors that you need for your application, you will need to know what kind of current you plan to draw through your system. Now the best way to figure out the power requirement for a radio controlled application is to measure it. If you measure it, you know exactly where you stand for your requirement on all levels of the components, especially what we're talking about today when it comes down to connectors. Now there's a catch. What happens if you can't measure it because your system doesn't have the connector is actually soldered onto it in order to be able to measure data live. The best thing to do there is to look up on the forms, find someone that has a system similar to you that expresses the amount of power that is being consumed continuously through that application. You then want to use that value to select your own connectors and then once you have those connectors soldered on, now you can go ahead and measure the amount of power that is actually being delivered 
through those connectors. If your specific connector is underrated or overrated, you then have the decision to go ahead, unsolder those and solder on the correct ones and use the ones that you've just taken off for a future application. The third step is really just looking at the chart. How much power can you actually get away with through the bullet connectors? Well, if you look at on our smaller end of the range, a two millimeter connector is going to be good for up to about the 30 to 35 amp region. I use two millimeters on anything from just an amp of power all the way up to that 30 amp region. Our next size that we're gonna look at is the 3.5 millimeter connector. A 3.5 millimeter connector is then gonna be good for all the way up to about 70 to 75 amps. The next step that we're gonna look at is to our four millimeter connector, and that is gonna be good for up to about 100 to 105 amps total. A 5.5 millimeter bullet connector is going to be good for upwards of about 140 to 150 amps. Our six millimeter is gonna be upwards of 160 to 170 amps. And our eight millimeter connector goes all the way up to 200 amps of continuous current being drawn. That is gonna cover a lot of different radio controlled applications. Pretty well 99% of them operating within that region. Now there are a few pointers that I do have to point out. All of those specifications that we talked about are going to vary based on the manufacturer of those connectors just for things like quality purposes, the differences between the connectors and how they're made and the materials that are used. And there's also another catch. Those connector ratings are for connectors that are in new and good condition. Connectors do wear over time. And it's important to realize that because it's not just about those connectors that go from your speed control to the motor that are rarely plugged in and out. Those still can wear even though you are not cycling the connection point of those connectors. The next point to make is that you can oversize the connector that you plan to use in your application. For example, if you wish to be super conservative, you can go ahead and select that eight millimeter connector, good for 200 amps of continuous power for your application, taking only 40 amps. That is gonna be completely okay as long as you can physically handle within your application the physical size as well as the weight that comes with that large connector. Now the last point that I wanna make is that connectors can fail. They can break and then become damaged to the point where you should and must replace them. Now fortunately enough for me, I've never actually had a connector fail to the point where it's crashed one of my radio controlled vehicles. However, I have had connectors that had broken components or parts of the connector on it. And as soon as you see or notice that there's a broken section of the connector, it is very important to switch that connector out before anything bad happens. This is why it's a great idea to go ahead, unplug the connection point of that motor and speed control once in a while just to inspect the connector. One thing to point out is that some of the connectors that have that sleeve placed over another component within the connector, this can actually fail in such a way where you can't actually see the failure that's about to happen from the outside of the connector. And it's a good idea that when you're running your radio control vehicle, if you ever have some sort of power dropout within that vehicle where power just disappears and then all of a sudden you get it back again, take a look at those connectors. And if you can't figure out if there's a problem or not, just replace them. Well guys, that pretty well covers it for the video on connectors that are used between your speed control as well as your brushless motors. Like the video if you do, don't forget to take a look at the Patreon link that is going to be in the description below and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.